Chapter 28, Sections 246 through 257. How Angels Talk with Us. Section 246. Angels who talk with us do not talk in their own language, but in ours, or in other languages in which we may be fluent, not in languages of which we have no knowledge. The reason for this is that when angels talk with us, they turn toward us and unite with us. And one consequence of this union is that the two parties have much the same thought processes. Since our thinking is closely allied with our memory and our language flows from it, the two parties share the same language. Further, when angels or spirits come to us and unite with us by turning toward us, they enter into our whole memory so completely that it seems exactly as though they themselves know everything we know, including our languages. Section 246, subsection 2. I have talked with angels about this and said that they might suppose they were talking with me in my own mother tongue simply because it seemed that way, when in fact it was not they talking, but I. This follows from the fact that angels cannot utter a single word of our human language. Section 237. Then, too, human language is natural, and they are spiritual, and spiritual beings cannot produce anything natural. They have answered that they knew that when they were talking with us, their union with us was with our spiritual thinking. But since this spiritual thinking flowed into our natural thought, and this natural thinking is so closely allied with our memory, it seemed to them as though our language were their own, along with all our acquired knowledge." This is because it has pleased the Lord that there should be this kind of union and interpresence of heaven with us. However, they said, the state of humanity is now such that this kind of union is no longer with angels, but with spirits who are not in heaven. Section 246, subsection 3. I have talked with spirits about this matter too, but they wanted to believe not that we were talking, but that they were talking within us, so that we did not really know what we know, but they did, which meant that everything we knew came from them. I wanted to convince them by many arguments that this was not the case, but failed. We will explain later just who are meant by angels and who by spirits, when we come to our description of the world of spirits. Section 247. The reason angels and spirits are so intimately united to us that it seems to them as though our characteristics were their own is that there is such an intimate union within us of the spiritual and the natural worlds that they are virtually one. However, because we have separated ourselves from heaven, the Lord has provided that there should be angels and spirits with each of us, and that we should be governed by the Lord through them. This is the reason there is such an intimate union. It would have been different if we had not separated ourselves, because then we could have been governed by the Lord through a general inflow from heaven without having spirits and angels assigned to us. There will be more on this later, though, where we describe how heaven is united to us. Section 248. When angels and spirits talk with us, it sounds just as audible as when we talk with each other, but it is not audible to people who are nearby, only to ourselves. This is because the speech of an angel or spirit flows first into our thought and then by an inner root into our organ of hearing so that it activates it from within. Our speech with each other flows first into the air and comes to our organ of hearing and activates it by an outward route. We can see from this that the speech of an angel or spirit with us is heard within us and that since it activates our hearing mechanism just as much as our speech with each other does, it is just as audible. The fact that the speech of an angel or spirit flows down into the ear from within has been made clear to me from the way it flowed into my tongue as well and made it tremble slightly, though not with the actual motion involved when we are articulating the sounds of speech in the formation of words. Section 249 Talking with spirits is rarely allowed nowadays, though, because it is dangerous. 
the spirits then actually know that they are with us, which otherwise they would not. And evil spirits, by nature, harbor a murderous hatred for us and crave nothing less than our total destruction, body and soul. This is what actually goes on in people who regularly lose themselves in delusions, even to the point that they lose touch with the pleasures appropriate to their natural person. There are some people who lead solitary lives who sometimes hear spirits talking with them without risk. But the Lord keeps these spirits a little space away so that they do not know they are with these individuals. Most spirits, you see, are not aware that there is any other world than the one they are living in, or therefore that there are people anywhere else. So we are not allowed to talk back to them, since if we did, they would know. People who are constantly thinking about religious matters, so wrapped up in them that they practically see them within themselves, also begin to hear spirits talking with them. This is because when we voluntarily get wrapped up in religious matters, no matter what kind, without the interruption of various useful activities in the external world, these matters enter into us very deeply and take substance there so that they occupy our whole spirit move into the spiritual world, and affect spirits there. However, people like this are visionaries or fanatics, and no matter what spirit they hear, they believe it is the Holy Spirit, even though the spirits they hear are fanatical. Spirits like this see false things as true, and because they see them as true, they convince themselves and also convince the people into whom they flow. Further, since spirits like this who command obedience have also begun to urge people to do evil things, they have gradually been moved away. Fanatical spirits can be differentiated from other spirits by the fact that they believe they are the Holy Spirit and that what they are saying is divine. They do not harm us because we offer them divine worship. I have talked with them on occasion, and the unspeakable things they instill into their worshipers have come to light. They live all together toward the left in a desert area. Section 250. Conversation with angels is not granted, though, except to people who are focused on truths that flow from good intent, especially people who acknowledge the Lord and the divine nature within his human nature, because this is the truth in which heaven exists. For, as already noted, the Lord is heaven's God, section 2 through 6. The Lord's divine nature makes heaven, sections 7 through 12. The Lord's divine nature in heaven is love for him and thoughtfulness from him toward one's neighbor, sections 13 through 19. And the whole heaven, grasped as a single entity, reflects a single individual, as does each community of heaven and each individual angel, has a perfect human form because of the Lord's divine human nature, sections 59 through 86. We can see from this that conversation with angels is not granted except to people whose deeper levels have been opened by divine truths all the way to the Lord, since it is into these that the Lord flows within us. And when the Lord flows in, so does heaven. The reason divine truths open our deeper levels is that we have been so created that our inner person is an image of heaven and our outer an image of the world, section 57. And our inner person is opened only by the divine truth that emanates from the Lord because this is the light and the life of heaven, sections 126 through 140. Section 251. The inflow of the Lord himself into us is into the forehead and from there into the whole face. The inflow of the spiritual angels who are with us is into our head overall, from the forehead and temples to the whole region that covers the cerebrum, because this area corresponds to our intelligence. In contrast, the inflow of heavenly angels is into the part of the head that covers the cerebellum and is called the occiput, from one ear to the other and down to the neck, since this area corresponds to our wisdom. All the speech of angels comes into our thoughts by these two paths. This has enabled me to notice just which angels were talking with me. Section 252 
People who talk with heaven's angels also see the things that are in heaven because they are seeing in that light of heaven that surrounds their inner levels. Not only that, through them angels see things that are on our earth. For people who talk with angels, heaven is actually united to our world and our world to heaven. For as already noted, section 246, when angels turn toward us, they unite themselves with us so completely that it seems to them exactly as though whatever is ours is actually theirs. This applies not only to elements of our language, but to what is involved in our sight and hearing. In addition, it seems to us exactly as though the things that are flowing in through the angels are really ours. The earliest humans on our planet enjoyed this kind of union with heaven's angels, which is why their times are called the Golden Age, because they acknowledged the divine in human form and therefore were acknowledging the Lord. They talked with heaven's angels as they did with members of their own family. And heaven's angels talked with them in the same way. And in them, heaven and this world were a single whole. But after those times, people moved step by step away from heaven by loving themselves more than the Lord and the world more than heaven. So they began to feel the pleasures of self-love and love of the world separately from the pleasures of heaven, ultimately to the point where they did not know there was any other kind of pleasure. Then their deeper levels were closed, the levels that open into heaven, while their outer levels were open to the world. Once this has happened, we are in the light in respect to everything in this world, and in darkness in respect to everything in heaven. Section 253. Since those times, people have seldom talked with heaven's angels, though some have talked with spirits who are not in heaven. Our inner and outer levels can, by their nature, be turned toward the Lord as their common center, section 124 or toward ourselves, and therefore away from the Lord. The ones that are turned toward the Lord are also turned toward heaven, while the ones that are turned toward ourselves are also turned toward this world. And the ones that are turned in this latter direction are hard to raise up. Still, they are raised up by the Lord to the extent that they can be, through a turning of our love, and this is accomplished by means of truths from the Word. Section 254. I have been told how the Lord spoke to the prophets through whom the word was written. He did not talk with them the way he did with the early people by an inflow into their deeper natures, but through spirits sent to them whom the Lord filled with his appearance. In this way, he inspired them with the words that they in turn told to the prophets, so that it was not a case of inflow, but of direct command. Since at that time the words were coming directly from the Lord, the very details are filled with the divine and contain within themselves an inner meaning of such nature that heaven's angels take them in a heavenly and spiritual meaning while we are taking them in a natural meaning. In this way, the Lord unites heaven and earth through the word. I have also been shown how the Lord fills spirits with his divine nature by means of his appearance. Spirits filled with the divine by the Lord have no sense whatever that they are not actually the Lord, or that it is not the Lord who is speaking, which lasts as long as they are talking. Afterward, they realize and admit that they are spirits and that they were not talking on their own, but from the Lord. Because this was the state of the spirits who talked with the prophets, they themselves said that Jehovah was talking. The spirits actually called themselves Jehovah, as can be seen not only in the prophetic books, but also in the historical books of the Word. Section 255. To illustrate what the union of angels and spirits with us is like, I may cite a few memorable instances that will serve to illuminate the subject and enable some conclusions to be drawn. When angels and spirits turn toward us, it seems to them exactly as though our language were their own and that they have no other. This is because they are involved in our language at such times and do not even remember their own. The moment they turn away from us, though, 
they are back in their own angelic and spiritual language and have no knowledge whatever of ours. The same thing has happened with me when I have been in the company of angels and in a state like theirs. Then I have talked with them in their language and knew nothing of my own. I could not even remember it. However, the moment I was no longer in their company, I was back in my own language. Section 255, subsection 2. It is also worth noting that when angels and spirits turn toward us, they can talk with us even from a great distance. They have talked with me from far off, just as audibly as though they were nearby. Still, when they turn away from us and talk with each other, nothing of what they say is audible to us, even though this is happening right next to our ears. This has enabled me to see that in the spiritual world, all union depends on the way people are facing. Section 255, subsection 3. Again, it is worth noting that many of them can talk with one of us at the same time, and that person with them. They send some particular spirit from themselves to the individual with whom they want to talk, and this envoy spirit turns toward the person while the others turn toward their envoy spirit, and so concentrate their thoughts, which the spirit then presents. It seems to such envoys entirely as though they were talking on their own, and to the others as though they themselves were. So a union of several with one is achieved by the way they face. But we will say more later about these envoy spirits called agents and the communication that takes place through them. Section 256. No angel or spirit is allowed to talk with one of us from the angel's or spirit's own memory, only from that of the individual in question. Angels and spirits actually have memory just as we do. If a spirit were to talk with us from his or her own memory, then it would seem to us entirely as though the thoughts were our own when they would really belong to the spirit. It is like remembering something that we have never seen or heard. I have been granted knowledge of the truth of this by experience. This is why some of the ancients were of the opinion that after some thousands of years they would return to their former life and all its deeds, and that they had, in fact, returned. They gathered this from the fact that sometimes a kind of memory would come up of things that they had never seen or heard. This happened because spirits had flowed from their own memory into the images of these people's thoughts. Section 257. There are also spirits called natural and physical spirits who do not unite with our thoughts when they come to us the way other spirits do, but rather enter our bodies and take over all its senses, talking through our mouths and acting through our limbs. It seems to them entirely as though everything of ours were theirs. These are the spirits that possess people, but they have been cast into hell by the Lord and moved decisively away, so possession like this no longer occurs nowadays.